it's not that the money isn't there if they wanted to do something about it. The government not having this conversation and not paying us what we're asking for is a political choice that they're making. It's not that the money's not there. They can find it when they want to. We're here because we are genuinely concerned about public safety. Um, when people are leaving the NHS in droves, members of staff aren't staying, they're, they're disillusioned, they're disheartened, they're fed up with the situation as it currently is and there's no incentive to stay. Um, the pay is not rising in line with inflation and as a result our patients are suffering and that's what we want to change. It was interesting, I saw a statement the other day from one of the Labour MPs who said that a 1.5% uh, tax on all income over £5 million would raise £16 billion. To pay us a pay rise in line with inflation would cost £15 billion. So it's not that the money isn't there if they wanted to do something about it. The government not having this conversation and not paying us what we're asking for is a political choice that they're making. It's not that the money's not there. They can find it when they want to. I think most, I speak for most of us when we say that we're still responding to the highest category of calls. We, I don't think we can in good conscience not respond to the people who need us the most. Um, but that's the point of the ambulance. We're there for emergencies and we will continue to respond to those emergencies. But it just goes to prove that um, ambulance delays when we were last on strike, um, the delays were down five, five times less than they were on any other day previously. So the public aren't calling unless they absolutely need us and we're handed over a quicker in hospital. This is what it should be like. This is not, but this is not what it's like day to day. Um, and yeah, it's, we, we'll still go and help people. That's what, that's what our job is. That's what we've signed up for. That's what, what we want to do. So not on strike day, it's not unusual for us to go out to our first patient of the day when we start our shift. Um, that patient might have been waiting in excess of 12 hours for an ambulance. They then need to go to hospital and we might spend that full 12 hours outside the hospital waiting to hand that patient over. That's, that's not my job. And then I'm sitting outside the hospital hearing shouts for emergency calls that we can't respond to because I've got a patient on the back of my ambulance. And that's day in, day out. Um, and you go home and you feel dejected and depressed that you're not doing the job that you signed up for. Um, this is not how the ambulance service should be. And yet somehow you have to go home, get up and do it all again the next day. And it's it's disheartening and it, there's, there doesn't seem to be an end in sight. So that's what we're trying to change. None of us joined this job for money because we could have earned a lot more money elsewhere. It's never been the best paid industry to work in. <laughs> We've done it for the love of the job and for the patients and we've continued to do it. But now we've got to the stage where we are losing staff day after day after day because they cannot keep going on the way they're going. And that means we can't look after our patients and we want to look after our patients. We want them to have the best care possible. We want to keep the NHS. If we keep the NHS, we can keep providing these services for the public for all of the public but eventually if we leave the NHS because we can no longer stay working for them we'll lose the NHS and that will affect every single body apart from the rich and the government who go private anyway they don't use the NHS do they so that's why it is about the patients we love our job it's a vocation it's not a job it's a vocation for us but we need to keep the NHS and the only way we can do that is get the government to keep funding it People are dying, we see it all the time. You know, I said last time, you know, on the last strike day, because of the delays, we are seeing people die. We're seeing people not getting the treatments that they need at the time they need it. So they're becoming more sick and then eventually they die because we can't get to them or they're not getting the surgeries that they need in time because of the underfunding, because of the understaffing. We see it every day.